parliament has not been prorogued at all. Why that is, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So, let's get started. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another short but very important Brexit video. As you all probably knew, today the Supreme Court was to publish their verdict on the cases regarding prorogation. And they just did, with, for some people, big surprises, for others with a hoped outcome. Parliament decided about the appeal from Gina Miller against um, the High Court decision that prorogation is a political business and not a business of the courts and had to decide about the appeal of government against the decision against the decision of um, the Scottish Court of Sessions rule that prorogation was unlawful because the advice of Boris Johnson to the Queen was unlawful and that the prorogation and everything around it was null and void. The chair of the court gave a, about a 20 minute explanation um, why they came to the verdict they did. Um, they talked about the advice and the question if the advice of the government to the Queen to prorogue Parliament is justiciable at all. They talked about if so is the advice lawful and of course what happens if it isn't. First of all, the court gave a unanimous decision. That is not very often the case, even not in the German constitutional court here. Uh, we, we don't always have unanimous decisions, so this is quite a clear signal what um, happened in their deliberations. First of all, the court decided the advice the Prime Minister gives to the Queen regarding prorogation is justiciable. So it is the business of the court if this advice has some intentions that are not in line with the British Constitution. Even if it's not a coded constitution, there is a constitution. And so a court can decide on it. Second, they decided the advice is unlawful because it happened, first of all, in a time where decisions have to be made which have a big impact on the Constitution. She never mentioned Brexit by name, but of course everybody will agree that this is something that really has impact on the country and the Constitution. There, A lot of laws have to be changed. She said this wasn't a normal prorogation and that this has a major impact on democracy. She even said the impact on democracy in this case was extreme to prorogue Parliament in a situation like this. And because Boris Johnson and his government always said there are only five days lost compared to party conference recess, which usually happens at this time, she made quite clear that prorogation is not recess. During recess, Parliament can still act if they want. In prorogation, they can't. So she stated there were more than five days lost, there were five weeks lost for Parliament, and a lot of laws would be lost that weren't concluded with royal assent before prorogation, which were in, in uh, preparation for a long time, which were in the process, and um, they would have been completed before a normal prorogation. Once again, she stated that the advice given to the Queen was unlawful, because it was just meant to frustrate Parliament from its normal functions and uh, there was no reasonable justification for doing that. A normal Queen's speech is not a reasonable justification for a five-week prorogation. So, just to make this clear at this point, they didn't say a five-week prorogation is impossible and never lawful. They just said you have to have a reasonable um, justification for it, and in this case it wasn't there. Then she get, got to the point that prorogation is a normal proceeding of Parliament. She made quite clear that prorogation is no proceeding of Parliament at all. 
because it doesn't happen in the House of Commons, it happens in the House of Lords, and it's not happening with consent of Parliament, because the Prime Minister decides to give this advice to the Queen, and the Queen will, dis the, uh, will um, grant this prorogation. Parliament is not involved in this process, so this is not a proceeding of Parliament. The conclusion of all was then, of course, that the advice is unlawful, and they agreed with the Scottish court the advice is void and of no effect at this point. So when um, there was a paper in the House of Lords from the Queen that stated there's prorogation, the court regards this as a white sheet of paper. There was nothing on it. The writing on this paper never existed from the point of view of the Supreme Court. And because of that, the whole prorogation and the ceremony before, of course, are void and of no effect. That means the Supreme Court ruled today the prorogation never happened. Parliament effectively is not prorogued. Parliament is in session, so to speak. So it is up to Speaker John Burko to uh, recall Parliament to their sessions. And uh, she stated if there are some proceedings the court is not aware about where the Prime Minister would have to act in, in a certain way, which they don't believe he has to. But even if he has to, um, she said they were quite glad that uh, Boris Johnson promised via his barrister to follow the verdict of uh, the court and recall Parliament. So, what does that mean? I don't think uh, Boris Johnson has to do anything now after this ruling, so I guess... Um, John Burko can recall Parliament and they can start with normal proceedings again. Effective immediately, of course. We will see what happens. There were speculations that Boris Johnson will prorogue Parliament again. We will see how he reacts at the moment he is in New York um, at the UN Climate Summit. And uh, I immediately started filming after um, the court ruling. So I haven't seen any reactions there yet, but I want to give you that information as quickly as possible. So we will see what happens later today. Um, if there is some major announcement, of course, I'll bring you another video about that tomorrow. But for now, you know what happened. This is a big strike um, against Boris Johnson. But there's one point. I never heard a word in the um, verdict that said, like the Scottish court did, that Boris Johnson lied to the Queen. His intentions were unlawful, but they never said he lied to the Queen. So the question about um, can he stay on his post is not as with a very clear answer as it could have been if they completely followed the Scottish court. So we will see if Boris Johnson holding on to his post. I think so. Um, there was a lot of uh, rumble in the live chat, by the way, where on, on the YouTube channel where I watched um, the verdict of the court live. And uh, it's going to be some interesting days to come. We will see what happens now. We will see what Im impact it has on the government. We will see what impact it has on Parliament. Will Boris Johnson remain on his post? Will Boris Johnson then try to prorogue Parliament again? Let's be curious and we'll have to let them surprise us. For now, I thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you soon.